Oh, but one, one great victory there was uh, the big super interstate and the Three Sisters Bridge was going to blast across here right up to Lover Archbishop Park, Connor. Um, but no, some people rallied and it was a great effort. And, un and fortunately now we're not plagued with that many interstates blitzing through the, uh, the city. So victories, even against the powerful highway lobby, are, are good. Let me uh, give one quick uh, international perspective, uh, because uh, Friends of the Earth has member groups in 75 countries, and around the world, many of those people, advocates in those countries, face fear of an assassination. One great leader, Goldman Prize winner, Berta Caceres from Honduras, was brutally murdered because she was leading the opposition to a dam trying to save the forest. And the people who were there had no rights and are under the, under the government of Honduras. And this is, this is something that the people in the United States don't realize. We can enjoy a relative degree of freedom to protest, to appear, and so forth. We have a legal system that is functioning unlike many of these others. And as a result, using what's been here, uh, the United States actually is number one in a good category, saving great rivers. If you think we had eight protected rivers in 1973, over 250 today, these we were afraid in those early years that they were all going to be dammed, diverted, and uh, contaminated. But we've set the model for the world there. Over 1,200 dams have been removed, American Rivers, which is here, pioneered the way with the Dam Removal Handbook. Suddenly the fisheries are back. It's pretty amazing. And even in D.C., we've had some good things. So a small dam was removed in Rock Creek Park. A fish ladder was put in at the old Pierce Mill on Tilden Street. And there are runs of uh, uh, airing uh, going on now. So right in here, um, we've been greatly fortunate. And uh, <clears throat> so the picture is good, but we, we still have what has come out today. We've, we had a law, 1972 Clean Water Act, and many of us, as I grew up here since 1948, and I saw, first thing I did was wade in Rock Creek at Frog Rock there by the Police station, but the water got worse and worse. The Potomac River, where the Kennedy Center is today, wasn't here in 1948. But by the end of the 60s, it stank so badly that you wouldn't want to get close to it. And I saw uh, this happen to the air. It started to get oranger and oranger each year. So the first Earth Day, I went out and took a look at some literature and began volunteering. That made all the difference. It changed the career from teaching math and philosophy to going. And I thought, uh, as some of you mentioned earlier, well, maybe maybe in five or possibly 10 years, we'll have this all cleaned up and go back to doing, doing some math and so on. But uh, it didn't turn out that way. And so what we're coming to grips with now is actually thinking about why we aren't getting greater enforcement of the law, why we have to keep suing and then they keep extending deadlines on it. We've seen that in the, the city here. It's unbelievable. And so I'm, I'm here as a, in my re retirement. I'm on eight nonprofit boards, one of which is the Potomac River Keeper. It's doing great work covering the Potomac River, the main stem, plus the Shenandoah, the big tributary. And we have a vision there that those, those streams ought to be clean, fishable, and swimmable. And we want to be proactive. We want to prevent uh, problems from occurring. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of those things that the Potomac Riverkeeper is, is doing. And as was mentioned, the river keepers are all over the world in uh, close to three dozen uh, countries. It's pretty impressive. And one of the things we want to do is to make sure that, that laws are enforced. Just think of it, if, if, if the only thing that happens is someone gets a minor slap on the wrist, oh, it was a great business decision, wow. Just cost, cost a couple million while our quarterly profits are in the billions, what the hell do we care? 
This applies to places like Dominion Power, the big utility in Virginia. What do they What do they do? They They can be. They just need to spend as they do uh, all this money on the Virginia legislators, state legislators, and they are by far the biggest contributor to them, and they get their way. Uh, and what we have then is a deterioration of too many enforcement agencies captured by the very they, the the, the polluters, the water polluters that are supposed to be regulated, capture the water regulating bodies. And this has come to light in Virginia because the head of the Virginia Department of, uh, uh, of Environmental Quality, uh, David Paler, is uh, quoted uh, uh, or found in uh, the uh, Richmond Times Dispatch to guess what? He's got all these big permits to decide on coal ash. And uh, Dominion Powers owns coal ash ponds, and they provided him free tickets to the big Masters Golf Tournament, and picked up his $1,200 liquor bill. Mm -mm. Mm. Now, and he's about to decide this spring whether to just give a green light on a permit to his discharge from Possum Point. Uh, coal ash ponds, and that's down right next to the marine base there, Quantico Creek. You got it here. Okay, here's the Potomac River coming down. Here's Quantico Creek. Here's the old power plant, and here are the coal ash ponds. So one of the things that happened is these coal ash ponds, you all are familiar with them? Well, depending on the kind of coal you're burning, it, those things, that, that wastewater can contain a lot of mercury or cadmium or whatever. It's a witch's brew of god-awful stuff. And they are breaking and leaking all over the country. Now, one broke uh, in, that Duke Energy had in North Carolina contaminated 70 miles of, of the Yan River flowing right into Virginia. Um, these, um, we found, uh, we, we had been doing some testing uh, of water wells as, as well as checking as much as we could see from there. And they are, they are really dirty. And we discovered that one of these ponds had been virtually emptied a year ago last spring, but there was no <coughs> permit to discharge. And we said, what happened here? Did you discharge? No, we haven't discharged the thing. That was Dominion's claim that we hadn't. But with the pressure kept coming on, what was going on here? And they finally did admit they dumped 30 million gallons of this stuff. I mean, people fish in, in, in the, uh, these resources, and you can go on the Potomac River site and see a whole lot more because on every issue uh, they will have what, what's going on and then things that you can do, as well as monitoring. And here's another example of monitoring and what you can catch them at. Uh, we had people working the northern part of the Potomac near National Airport. There was this big slick out there uh, that we picked up. Uh, it was from a substation of Dominion in northern Virginia. It uh, uh, was equivalent to heating oil. It was not a big tar sands heavy crude. But it, w it hit right into the National Waterfowl Sanctuary, Roaches Run, killed several dozen birds for a quick indicator, but no one knows how many because you'll never find them. Um, but Dominion just denied they had anything, any response. So we gave the data to the Coast Guard, and they finally uh, uh, one day decided they better release it because they, they confirmed what we said it was signatured right to that spot. So I'll give you three times that afternoon. One o'clock, the Coast Guard does, one o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock. One o'clock, the Coast Guard does a press conference, says we've ID'd this, Dominion Power is responsible for this. Three o'clock, Dominion does its own press conference denying categorically this outrage. And at six o'clock, something's happened. Dominion admits, yes, that was after all ours. Well, my question is, why is this company allowed to be the restricted monopoly for the state of Virginia? Why don't we start getting tougher and think bigger uh, on really changing the dynamics? I mean, this is not caring for any of these resources. The, it's not as if the, the impacts of these are unknown. It's not as if no one ever fishes or uses this. So 
Uh, if you go to the Potomac River uh, Keeper site, uh, then you can um, find out uh, more of what you can do. Let me just distribute this newsletter. Uh, let me just send that around. And uh, that's probably enough. I mean, although I could go on, but if you want to uh, leave uh, your name, if you're interested in doing any of these things, that's good. And one concluding thought for you, I have a lot of work pretty late in time. Yeah, well. um, okay. Many of you mentioned watershed restoration, bringing wetlands back. We've seen all sorts of ways of holding the raindrop where it falls. This may be one of the most important things that we can do globally, regionally, city and town-wise, in the neighborhoods. Why? Because there is evidence that the more we sort of revegetate and rewater watersheds, you start pulling carbon out of the atmosphere and it happens fast. It can happen within a year or two years that you're starting to do this in combination with regenerative agriculture instead of emitting greenhouse gases as industrial ag does. The same thing is true in the watershed. So many of you have programs that do this. So think of the possibility of, of the, and the multiplicity of benefits that come from pursuing this. So you can go on to many different websites. There's one of a group in New England called Bio for Climate, the number four, bioforclimate.org. If you want to see, they just, they've got a lot of good videos on all the different techniques of doing it. All set? One more, oh. why don't you pop up if you can. Just uh, in June, uh, Potomac River Keepers doing a series of terrific float trips. And, and on all parts of, of the Potomac and Shenandoah. Not all, because you can't, I mean, but uh, a lot of them. And so I would invite you to just go out and take some people with you and enjoy it, and then um, th this is always a, a real good seller. So this, this can show you uh, some of the things, too, where you can go if you want to participate in this. June 8 through 19. Wonderful. Thank you.